Russ Gerling, CEO of TransCanada, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So, first question everyone probably wants to talk to you about is the Keystone XL pipeline. We had the ruling by a court in Nebraska saying that the governor didn't have the right to approve the pipeline. Just real quickly, what was kind of your reaction to that? How did you feel when you saw yet another kind of uh, rut in the wheel? Obviously frustration. I mean, it's, uh, it's five and a half years and counting in terms of a process for uh, approval of this pipeline. Uh, that said is, is that the uh, governor and the attorney general appealed uh, immediately and upon appeal what, what happens is, is essentially it stays the existing law, LB 1161 is still in place so we still have an approved route until an appeal court you know, has, has a review of, of the matters. Their you know, continued view, I mean this isn't our case, this is the state of Nebraska's case, um, their view is the law is still valid and if it's not, I mean obviously we'll have to go down another path to, uh, to get approval. We just you know, need to know which, which, uh, which uh, authority has jurisdiction and, and then we'll get the, the route approved. Right, and a lot of the talk right now has been that the president may end up waiting until everything clears up in Nebraska before he finally does make a decision to pass a presidential approval of this. Um, that could take a year, maybe longer. Um, have you guys considered that? Well, I guess it would be our view is that that's, uh, that's not required, um, is that the, the route in Nebraska will be approved by some authority at, at some point in time, and there isn't a requirement uh, under um, the executive order that the Department of State is working under. Um, and so I think at the current time, the Department of State has indicated publicly that uh, they're going to continue to review this. Um, there'll be many you know, lawsuits and, and bumps in the road, um, and you can't stop the process every time you know, one of the, the activists uh, injects something into, into the mix or, uh, or, or there's a lawsuit that, uh, uh, that, that needs to be adjudicated. Um, you need to get through this process, and, and I think that's our understanding is they're going to continue to get through that process. Do you have any guess, just general time frame, when you expect, if this does get approved, when something might actually go through? Well, I think if, if we were to get a presidential permit, um, uh, it would be our, our intent to, to start construction as, as, as quickly as possible. Right. Obviously, the, the issues in Nebraska need to be um, uh, dealt with before we can start construction in, in Nebraska. But, uh, you know, the, essentially the route is approved um, in, in both Montana and, and South Dakota. Um, so there are certain amounts of construction that could start immediately and we could put people back to work. Do you expect something out of the White House and the State Department this year? Well, I would hope so. As I said, we've been at this for, for five and a half years. There's nothing left to be uh, reviewed. Um, the uh, uh, Department of State has found on, on you know, five occasions the most recent environmental impact report that says that, uh, you know, that the pipeline won't have any impact on the uh, environment along the route, nor will it exacerbate GHG emissions. Um, uh, it'll create jobs and, uh, and economic stimulus and provide you know, much needed energy for the United States. I mean, it's in the national interest. So uh, it seems to me that this is the, the right thing to do and, and we should just get on with it.